Hello and welcome to another LAMP Bible Study. My name is James, your host and Bible reader for LAMP Bible Study. So once again, I'm super excited. It's another LAMP Bible Study. Made it. We made it to another LAMP Bible Study. <laughs> I always believe that these are so helpful, so helpful to me, and I pray and hope that they are helpful to you as well. And I pray and hope that we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom through his holy word. And so once again, welcome to Lamp Bible Study. And for today, we are in the book of First Kings, and I'm going to start off with chapter 11. And so I'm currently reading from an NIV Collegiate Bible. And of course, I'll be going over other versions as well. Um, so I started off with the NIV this time. And I really really i'm wanting to potentially do the ye old king james next but i'm not quite sure um because i also want to do a side by side or a comparison a multi-comparison too so we'll see uh where uh, the holy spirit takes me <laughs> where the lord takes me so uh today has been a um hmm huh. <laughs> it's it's been a day. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's been a day. And also, whenever you, uh, another thing is whenever we leave things, uh, uh, like instead of worrying about things, whenever we uh, leave those to the Lord and the Lord's hand, he provides and he, he comes through every single time. And we just have to have patience and we have to have understanding and we have to allow for the Lord to take over. Because a lot of times we want to control things and we're not meant to control everything. You know, we're not meant to control things like that, especially um, when it comes to different areas of our life. We try to be too controlling instead of letting go and letting the Lord handle um, things. So um, let's get started with today's Bible study again in 1 Kings chapter 11. Solomon's wives. King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter, Moabites or Moabites, uh, Ammonites, uh, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. They were from nations about which the Lord had told the Israelites, you must not intermarry with them because they will surely turn your hearts after their gods. Nevertheless, Solomon held fast to them in love. He had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines, and his wives led him astray. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord his God, as uh, the heart of David his father had been. Um, he followed Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. So Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not follow the Lord completely as David his father had done. So a, a quick backstory. Um, we have uh, Solomon is now ruler over Israel, and um, David his father has passed. And Solomon has already done some wise things. He has uh, built the Lord's temple. He was uh, because that was uh, told, prophesied by uh, one of the prophets to David um, that hit one of his sons would build the Lord's temple in Israel. And also Solomon has put together his uh, put the uh, put together the kingdom, and as well as uh, he has done quite a bit already you know he himself uh when it comes to um following the lord however again um we're not all perfect and solomon had many wives as we can see and unfortunately though there's consequences to those decisions now um we all you know we all go through uh, things we all sin however um, we can ask the Lord for forgiveness and he loves us so much that he forgives each and every time, every single time. It's not a justification to sin and to do wrong. What it is, is 
he understands that sometimes we fall, sometimes we go through temptation and we accept or we choose wrongly. Um, part of it's learning and part of it is actually us trying to control things, right? Trying to do things our way, what we think is correct, instead of allowing the Lord or giving it to the Lord or going to the Lord first when it comes to choices in life and decisions that we have to make. So there's a lot here, especially with Solomon. And Solomon, um, as we'll see, also faces consequences. Um, however, Solomon also was very wise. Um, he asked the Lord um, before he started really his kingship over Israel, um, because the Lord had asked him what what uh, he would want. Um, what he would want basically. And Solomon replied, he wanted wisdom. He wanted wisdom to rule the Lord's people, to be able to not just not rule, but in order to lead them, in order to um, just be a just person and help Israel. And so the Lord blessed him not only with wisdom, but also with a long life and riches. <laughs> and so with that, you know, Solomon may have felt some kind of way, especially later in life. Um, and Solomon admits it and because he uh, writes about that in other um, um, books, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. And he admits, he says, uh, yeah, I did everything. I did a lot of the stuff that we weren't supposed to do, <laughs> but it turned to nothing. It was nothing. And he provides us the true meaning, the true meaning of life and the true meaning of worship. So, um, you know, with that, bringing past to present, again, we ourselves, we can fall short too, especially in our walk with the Lord. And at those times, it's don't get into a justification of yourself. Just ask, humble yourself, ask, humble yourself and ask for forgiveness because that's what's needed. And it's, and the Lord knows, the Lord knows whether we're speaking truth to him or not as well. So don't feel like that you can hide it, you know, hide that you still feel that your decision or what you want it to do was the best way. Um, because the Lord already knows, <laughs> you know, so it's fruitless to ask for forgiveness when you're not really asking for forgiveness. So there's a lot here, you know, when it comes to past and present um, and and thinking about things and how in our lives we want we want to avoid those things. And I believe that um, seeking Lord's wisdom, having a cl as close as walk as possible with the Lord, um, as it, anything to help us, you, myself, uh, every one of us um, will help will help prevent those wrong thoughts, will help prevent the sin, will help prevent us um, from doing each other wrong. And also when we are walking, um, the Lord blesses us and uh, through us, the Lord blesses everyone else around us. And people see that and they wanna know, why are you, why, what, why are you so fulfilled? And then we can tell them, we can tell them the reason. As you know, and I've stated this before, we can tell them the reason, hey, it's Jesus. Jesus love for for us for me and I and I want to provide that back to them so reading over this first part what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind how does it make you feel and what does it make you think let's continue to read there's a lot again <laughs> uh, uh, Sam books of Samuel Kings and Chronicles they're very large or very large chapters so let's continue to read um, on a hill east of Jerusalem Solomon um, built a high place for Chem Chemosh or Chemosh, the detestable god of Moab, and for Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. He did the same for all his foreign wives who uh, burned incense and offered sacrifices to their gods. So Solomon was kind of like a lady pre pleaser. <laughs> you know, like, he was like, he was like, you're beautiful. I, I want you. And, and they were like, in order to have me, you need to have this. And he would be like, okay. <laughs> he may have been not really thinking things through. He may have been really 
going off of his desires, especially throughout through his life, the you know <laughs> his desires for other women, you know, and so unfortunately, that's that's not that's not um, he's not staying um, true to a person, you know, to and so he's having so and and that may bring consequence so um he's he's really also allowing these others to manipulate him um because of his lust or because of his wiles that he wants you know his harem that he wants or so what 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 you whatever you may call it so um he's not really thinking things through he's not uh, even concerned about the impact or consequences of his actions and so um do we do that do we do things and we don't really think those through we don't think about the consequences of our actions um we make quick choices um whether it be in relationships whether it be in life uh it could be uh, making quick judgments i mean you could even think about uh, temptations at a store do you really need an item or is it something that you're like, oh, I, I want to have that? You know, is it something that was necessary? Um, and, you know, I'm not talking about treating yourself and such. I'm just talking about those spur of the moment actions where you don't even necessarily bring God into it. Right. So there's a lot here what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind how does it make you feel and what does it make you think let's continue to read the lord became angry with solomon because his heart had turned away from the lord the god of israel who had appeared to him twice although he had forbidden solomon to follow other gods solomon did not keep the lord's command so the lord said to solomon since this is your attitude and you have not kept my covenant and my decrees which i i commanded you I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates. Nevertheless, for the sake of David, your father, I will not do it during your lifetime. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. Yet I will not tear the whole kingdom from him, but will give him one tribe for the sake of David, my servant, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. So now the Lord came to Solomon and told him the consequence of his action. And that is that instead of <clears throat> him continuing uh, in his family, the him to rule and his family to rule one of his sons to take over. Now the Israel is going to be split and he, his family is no longer going to uh, rule over Israel completely because he has done things that are detestable to the Lord and also followed these other gods. And so, um, what hap has happened is, um, a form of discipline because in, 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 in order to show Solomon the air of his ways and what he was doing. And Solomon explains that in other books too. He explains that, yep, he, this is what he did, and it was all um, thoughtless, and it was all careless, and it led, to no, it led to nothing. It didn't improve his life. It didn't do anything for him. And so um, he'll, he'll provide that additional information once we get into that portion. Um, but bringing past to present, um, do bad things happen in our lives? Yes. They do. Um, and sometimes they are consequences. And that's the time when we when we definitely want to humble ourselves and go and get closer to the Lord because he will uh, guide us through. And in this case, he's he is still keeping the promise with Solomon. It's just it, it has to be changed a little to show consequence of Solomon's actions. So what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Solomon's adversaries. Then the Lord raised up against Solomon 
an adversary, Hadad the Edomite, from the royal line of Edom. Earlier when David was fighting with Edom, Joab, the commander of the army, who had gone up to bury the dead, had struck down all the men in Edom. Joab and all the Israelites stayed there for six months until they had destroyed all the men in Edom. But Hadad, still only a boy, fled to Egypt with some Edomite officials who had served his father. They set out from Midian and went to Paran. Then taking men from Paran with them, they went to Egypt to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who gave Hadad a house and land and provided him with food. Pharaoh was so pleased with Hadad that he gave him a sister of his own wife, of his own wife Queen Tephanes, in marriage. The sister of Tephanes bore him a son named Gunabath, whom Tephanes brought up in the royal palace. There Gunabath lived with Pharaoh's own children. While he was in Egypt, Hadad heard that David rested with his fathers that and that Joab, the commander of the army, was also dead. Then Hadad said to Pharaoh, let me go, that I may return to my own country. Nothing Hadad, or um, what, what have you lacked here that you want to go back to your own country? Pharaoh asked. Nothing Hadad replied. But do not let. Uh, but do let me go. And God raised up against Solomon another adversary, Rezon, son of Eliad, Eliada, Eliada, who had fled from his master, Hadadezer, king of Zobah. He gathered men around <clears throat> him and became the leader of a band of re uh, rebels. When David destroyed the forces of Zobah, the rebels went to Damascus, where they settled and took control. Um, Rezon was Israel's adversary as long as Solomon lived, adding to the trouble caused by Hadad. So Rezon ruled in Aram and was hostile toward Israel. So, as you can see, um, the Lord is allowing things to happen, um, troubles to go, fall over Israel because these are the consequences. Israel was not following <clears throat> and and it all was uh, Solomon was part of the reason. Uh, some people would argue that he was the reason because he was the leader of Israel. And if he's uh, worshiping the Ashtoreth and Chemish and all these other gods, um, because he is trying to please his his wife or concubine, then other people in Israel are saying, "Hey, let's do it too. Let's. It's okay. Maybe that's where we're really getting our blessings from." And that's not the case. And so. Now the Lord is allowing for things to happen to Israel. They're being attacked by bandit groups and such. Uh, and so they no longer have full peace. Now they're having additional issues due to the fact that they're refusing to um, follow the commandments. Um, bringing past to present. <laughs> so uh, when things go bad, in our lives we have to think we have to step back and think now sometimes things go bad because there's already in, in a purpose there's an ordained purpose whether we've done something or not but sometimes we have caused something or we may have caused something and we didn't think about it and so you have to step back and think and understand your actions and my actions and we have to say and we and think okay what did I do to possibly contribute to the situation at hand and we have to realize what kind of role we played in it so sometimes it's even something that you may have done in the past like it may have not been something completely associated with it but in a way it is maybe you mistreated somebody maybe I mistreated somebody maybe we um, didn't give when we were led by the Holy Spirit to give and so we have to think about those things and understand that um, when we believe and we walk in the faith that we can be disciplined here on earth because though um, we won't be eternally punished, the Lord can still um, discipline his children. And so what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Jeroboam rebels against Solomon. Also, Jeroboam, son of Nebat, 
rebelled against the king. He was one of Solomon's officials, an Ephraimite from Zerada, and his mother was a widow named Zerah. Now, again, this is the Old Testament and a lot of these names. If you do know the correct pronunciation, please uh, read along with us and say them correctly. Um, if you know how to type them out in the comment section, please do so. <laughs> and thank you very much. Here is the account of how he rebelled against the king. Solomon had built the supporting terraces and had filled in the gap in the wall of the city of David, his father. Now Jeroboam was a man of standing. And when Solomon saw how well the young man did his work, he put him in charge of the whole labor force of the house of Joseph. About that time, Jeroboam was going out of Jerusalem and Ahijah, the prophet of Shiloh, met him on the way, wearing a new cloak. The two, men, the two of them were alone out in the country, and Ahijah took hold of the new cloak he was wearing and tore it into twelve pieces. Then he said to Jeroboam, Take ten pieces for yourself, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. See, I am going to tear the kingdom out of Solomon's hand and give you ten tribes. But for the sake of my servant David in the city of Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, he will have one tribe. I will do this because they have forsaken me and worshipped Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Sidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Molech, the god of the Ammonites. And have not walked in my ways, nor done what is right in my eyes, nor kept my statutes and laws as David Solomon's father did. But I will not take the whole kingdom of out of Solomon's hand. I have made him ruler all the days of his life for the sake of David my servant, whom I chosen and whom I and who observed my commands and statutes. I will take the kingdom from his son's hands and give you ten tribes. I will give one tribe to his son so that David, my servant, may always have a lamp before me in Jerusalem, the city where I chose to put my name. However, as for you, I will take you and you will rule over all that your heart desires. You will be king over Israel if you do whatever I command you and walk in my ways and do what is right in my eyes by keeping my statutes and commands as uh, David, my servant, did, I will be with you. I will build you a dynasty as enduring as the one I built for David and will give Israel to you. I will humble David's descendants because of this, but not forever. Solomon's, or Solomon tried to kill Jeroboam, but Jeroboam fled to Egypt to Shishak, the king, and stayed there until Solomon's uh, death. So what has happened is Jeroboam has been told uh, that prophecy that uh, Solomon has already been told. And so Jeroboam is going to be play a role in Israel. He's going to become a ruler in Israel uh, when, uh, not during Solomon's life though, but because Solomon uh, was worshiping other gods. So this is part of Solomon's consequence and what's going to happen. And it also can also tell us what's going on with his children too. Remember, the Lord was saying, for you to follow my commands so and uh, my statutes and my commands and and the law and that also shows us that the children were, were, were may have not been following the laws or commands because children also observe um, what may observe what their parents do and take after you know and so that's another thing that we can learn past or present is that a true thing that can happen yes uh, children do learn. They learn in school. They learn in the community. They learn in, uh, in different areas of their life, but they also learn from parents. They also learn from parents, grandparents, etc., from aunts and uncles and and and, um, and their brothers and sisters. They also le learn from the, the family. And so that also is with us too, the family of Christ. We also learn from each other. And so we have to also pray and make sure um, that we are in good counsel with one another, right? Um, to make sure that we're not led astray, each and every one of us. So there's a lot here. Once again, there's sermon upon sermon. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? Let's continue to read Solomon's death. 
As for the other events of Solomon's reign, all he did and the wisdom he displayed, are they not written in the book of the annuals of Solomon? Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel 40 years. Then he rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, his father. And Rehoboam, his son, succeeded him as king. So once again, Solomon um, is now deceased. Um, and he he did a lot. And we're going to read more into what he did and what his thoughts were and such in other books. But for right now, he is now passed. And so it's going to move the timeline forward into a son, Reboam. And there's going to be a lot of changes now um, that we're going to see from, um, from now on when it comes to leadership, the kingship in Israel as well. Um, also, um, just a quick thing, a quick thought before I forget it. And I think I forgot it. <laughs> it happens. Um, but um, there's a lot here. And so I would recommend uh, going back and rereading part portions of it just to make sure that you were able to digest because there's a lot here and there's a lot to digest, uh, to eat and digest. Um, and there's different things that can be taken from this as well. Um, um, like I mentioned before with families, um, whether it's a family or, um, or a Christian family or, you know, the, uh, people, uh, Christian family or, uh, people who walk, uh, the way and we're all parts, uh, a part of the body of Christ. So there's a lot here and, um, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Israel rebels against Rehoboam. It has begun. It's going to get really drunk. It's going to, the drama is going to increase like 20 fold. Rehoboam went to Shechem for all the Israelites had gone there to make him king. When Jeroboam, son of Nebet, heard this, he was still in Egypt where he had fled from King Solomon. He returned from Egypt. So they sent for Jeroboam and he and the whole assembly of Israel went to Rehoboam and said to him, your father put a heavy yoke on us, but now lighten the harsh labor in the heavy yoke he put on us and we will serve you. So um, Jeroboam is talking about because Solomon had, thanks to David, conquered all these other kingdoms and all these lands and all these peoples that they have been paying tribute all throughout Solomon's reign. And so <clears throat> thus the tribute had been very steep. And so now the, they're requesting um, relievance of some of the, the burden of the tributes. And so um, we're going to see what kind of counsel Rehoboam is going to take and get and actually accept. And it says a lot. It says a lot about character. It says a lot about um, what, what, we, what could it end up happening to us too. So let's continue to read. Rehoboam answered, go away for three days and then come back to me. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who had served his father Solomon during his lifetime. How would you advise me to answer these people? He asked. They replied, if today you will be a servant to these people and serve them and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your servants. But Rehoboam rejected the advice of the elders gave him and consulted the young men who had grown up uh, with him and were serving him. He asked them, what is your advice? How should we answer these people who say to me, lighten the yoke your father put on us? The young men who had grown up with him replied, tell these people who have said to you, your father put a heavy yoke on us, but make your yoke lighter. Tell them my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. <sighs> my, my father laid on you a heavy yoke. I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. Mm. Um, three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to Rehoboam as the king had said, come back to me in three days. The king answered the people harshly, rejecting the advice given him by the elders. He followed the advice of the young men and said, my father made your yoke heavy. I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people for this turn of events was from the Lord to fulfill the word 
the Lord had spoken to Jeroboam, son of Nebat, through Hijai the Shilonite. Shilonite. When all Israel saw that the king refused to listen to them, they answered the king, What share do we have in David? What part in Jesse's son? To your tents, O Israel. Look after your own house, O David. So the Israelites went home. But as for the Israelites who were living in the towns of Judah, Rehoboam still ruled over them. So it tells us a lot right here. And some people believe that <laughs> this is another topic hot topic um because it can be taken in multiple ways it could be taken some people believe in eight like ages ageism or people who've been here on, on the earth longer they may know may know more that is sometimes actually accurate because they have their life that they can life experiences that they can look um off of um their walk with the lord not always is that accurate, but it may be. And it also can be that the people, so remember, um, Rehoboam was raised in royalty. Um, everybody was, Solomon wasn't faithful um, throughout his whole life and to the Lord. And so there may have been some spoiltness going on, some pride, some prejudices, some things that Rehoboam was able to learn and um, able to um, create in his own because he went to these other people who were raised wealthy like he was. And so that may have played a role. It, wealth have, may have played a role in his decision making and how he wanted to live and how he looked at things and how he wanted more. And that plays a role, you know, in our lives too, bringing past to present. Greed. Greed has... When people say, um, oh, greed wasn't as bad, it's just gotten progressive. It's gotten progressive throughout time, all time. Um, it Every now and then, uh, people as a culture, as a society fix it or make fixes, temporary fixes. But who we need as a, as a just ruler is Jesus. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, after all is said, but greed has a has a role in a lot of this greed and uh, and just being very um, uh, just very prideful and uh, arrogant of uh, uh, being prideful and being arrogant and that's what the case may have been here uh, where he was looking at all his riches and his the people who he was right the you know the fellows that he was raised with. And he was like, I'm going to take their advice because they have fresh new advice th that I believe in too. He got, he, uh, that he may have believed in too. So his opinion or his thought process was validated. So we have to look at that. And anywhere in here, did he go to the Lord? Think about that too. The elders may have went to the Lord because they were with, they had been with David. But the younger ones... Not at all. So when we ourselves also seek advice, we also need to think about those things. Are we seeking advice from someone that it may be questionable or someone that we are trying to get um, validate our own opinions and thought process validated? We have to really think about that. Give it to the Lord. And then if the Lord allows you to seek an opinion or thought, then do, you know, then do so and understand that and, 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 and go right back to, I would always go back to the Lord or you may feel it immediately. That is whatever advice you're given or whatever your information you're given is correct. It is right because you may have that peace already from the Lord. So there's a lot to think about here. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? We may go over today because there's a lot here. Um, these, again, these chapters are pretty long. Uh, let's continue to read. So the Israelites went home, but uh, okay, so where that King Rehoboam sent out uh, Adon Adonai Rim, who was in charge of forced labor, but all Israel stoned him to death. There's his answer, right? <laughs> King Rehoboam, however, managed to get into his chariot and escape to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. 
when all the Israelites heard that Jeroboam had returned, they sent and called him to the assembly and made him king over all Israel. Only the tribe of Judah remained loyal to the house of David. When Rehoboam arrived in Jerusalem, he mustered the whole house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 fighting men, to make war against the house of Israel and to regain the kingdom for Rehoboam, son of Solomon. But this word of God came to Shemaiah, the man of God, Say to Rehoboam, son of Solomon, king of Judah, to the whole house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the rest of the people, this is what the Lord says. Do not go up to fight against your brothers, the Israelites. Go home, every one of you, for this is my doing. So they obeyed the word of the Lord and went home again, as the Lord had ordered. So there was a little bit of fear of the Lord still left, <laughs> you know. Um, the Lord sent, Lord sent his uh, prophet <clears throat> or seer. And they went, they followed, they followed along uh, because when the Lord tells you, you know, he's going to tell you what's going to happen or what to do and what not to do. And he's given them a choice and they chose wisely in this case. That may not be the case always though, <laughs> unfortunately, as we'll read on. Um, so... Think about that in our lives. When we have choice, think about that. Give it to the Lord and you will have peace. If you don't have peace about it, there's a reason. There's a reason for not having peace about something. Always seek the Lord and be patient as well. Always listen. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Golden calves at Bethel and Dan. Oh boy. Then Jeroboam fortified Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and lived there. From there he went out and built a Peniel. Jeroboam thought to himself, the kingdom will now likely revert to the house of David. If these people go up to offer sacrifices at the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, they will again give their allegiance to their Lord, Rehoboam, king of Judah. They will kill me and return to King Rehoboam. After seeking advice, the king made two golden calves. He said to the people, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. <laughs> now you know that this is not going to go well. <laughs> like I said, the, the uh, stuff's about to increase. The drama, the everything that you could think of is about to increase tenfold. One he set up in Bethel and the other in Dan. And this thing became a sin. The people went even as far as Dan to worship the one there. The Lord said, if you obey, do my commands, I'll such. So as you can see, Jeroboam's not doing that. He's doing what he wants to do. He got the kingship and boom, he's doing what he wants to do. Some people would say went to his head, right? Let's continue to read. Jeroboam built shrines on high places and appointed priests from all sorts of people. <laughs> They're supposed to be Levites, not all sorts of people, but let's continue. Even though they were not Levites, <laughs> he instituted a festival on the 15th day of the eighth month, like the festival held in Judah, and offered sacrifices on the altar. This he did in Bethel, sacrificing to the calves he had made. And at Bethel, he also installed priests at the high places he had made. On the 15th day of the eighth month, a month uh, of his own choosing, he offered sacrifices on the altar he had built at Bethel. So he instituted the festival for the Israelites and went up to the altar to make offerings. <clears throat> so he's sacrificing to these golden calf images and saying that this is the Lord, this is God. So, of course, there's going to be consequences, and we will learn and understand those as we continue to read, because Jeroboam's not going to be the only one that's going to do this. Um, also, we have to be careful in our lives, bringing bring past to present. Do we rely on things? I know... We rely on, you know, some people may rely on a car, a boat, a plane, other things. Do we rely on to, do we rely on things that are tangent? Do we rely on things that are not necessarily 
something that can truly help us? My answer is yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, we do. Um, we rely on things because we don't really think about that. We think about, we kind of as a society as a whole, it's kind of a learned thing. If your parents had a car and went to work and did this, then I need to do this. I need to be able to get a car and do this and rely on, on certain things. <clears throat> now, the Lord does provide for us. Um, are we putting our reliance correctly with the Lord or are we just relying on things here? It's a lot of things to think about. A lot of things to think about and 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 discuss that and have a discussion with the Lord in prayer, right? What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. The man of God from Judah. By the word of the Lord, the man of God uh, came from Judah to Bethel. Uh, as Jeroboam was standing by the altar to make an offering, he cried out against the altar by, uh, by the word of the Lord. O altar, altar, this is what the Lord says. A son named jo Josiah will be born to the house of David. On you, he will sacrifice the priests of the high places who now make offerings here, and human bones will be burned on you. That same day, the man of God gave a sign. This is a sign the Lord has declared. The altar will be split apart, and the ashes on it will be poured out. So this is a prophecy. That's so whenever we, so whenever we talk, see prophet, talk about prophecies, those things come true, right? <clears throat> so this is a prophecy and he's telling this to, um, to, uh, I believe it's Jeroboam. Yeah. To Jeroboam. Hmm. So let's continue to read. When King Jeroboam heard what the man of God cried out against the altar at Bethel, he stretched out his hand from the altar and said, seize him. But the hand he stretched out toward the man shriveled up so that he could not pull it back. Also, the altar was split apart and its ashes poured out according to the sign given by the man of God by the word of the Lord. Wrong person mess with, Jeroboam. Wrong person mess with. The Lord gave him a sign on top of a sign. He's, um, remember, the Lord gave him the kingdom to begin with. And he was to follow the commands and laws. He was giving part of the kingdom, not the whole kingdom, but part of the kingdom. And Jeroboam's not doing, he's doing what he wants to do. Let's continue to read. Then the king said to the man of God, intercede with the Lord your God and pray for me uh, that, I'm going to go over that again. Pray for me that my hand may be restored. Listen to what he said and how he said it. Then the king said to the man of God, intercede with the Lord your God. So right there, we already know that there's a problem. <clears throat> Jeroboam was, knew about God, maybe had followed God, but at this time he was no longer. <laughs> it's a lot that points, a lot, lot that stands out to us. It says a lot about his character as well. Let's continue to read. So the man of God interceded with the Lord and the king's hand was restored and became as it was before. The king said to the man of God, come home with me and have something to eat, and I will give you a gift. But the man of God answered the king, even if you were to give me half your possessions, I will, would not go with you, nor would I eat bread or drink water here. For I was commanded by the word of the Lord, you must not eat bread or drink water or return by the way you came. So he took another road and did not return by the way he had come to Bethel. Okay, so this is going to be, this next part, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be a little difficult for, um, because there's a lot of, there's a lot to it. And I will try to remember parts of it, like backstories and such. <clears throat> so, um, but before getting into that, um, you know, the Lord can give us a warning and the Lord can discipline us immediately. Um, we can also do things. We can do things without going to the Lord and those things can turn out bad. Even if we think it's going to be good. 
So there's a lot here, of course. Um, um, but it's just telling us that um, the Lord's trying to make sure that we understand that everything that is here was created, created by him. We, we should be thankful. We should be humble and, um, and understand. And so that's, uh, he loves us tremendously and he wants a loving relationship with us. And he doesn't want us to do, uh, things that can harm others and harm ourselves. And so that's what was happening. Jeroboam was doing stuff that was harming the people. He was the leader of Israel. He was now in command of 10 of the tribes and he was doing things to harm himself as well as Israel. And so uh, those harm sh harmings and those sins trickled down to the rest of the people and the Lord needed to step in and that's, or was not, <laughs> the Lord stepped in. And um, also now we know of a prophecy. We know of a, another prophecy so that someone from the house David will eventually um, come and destroy the this this area, this altar. So what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. <clears throat> okay. Now there was a certain old prophet living in Bethel whose sons came and told him all that the man of God had done there that day. They also told their father what he had said to the king. Their father asked them, which way did he go? And his son showed him which road the man of God from Judah had taken. So he said to his sons, saddle the donkey for me. And when they had saddled the donkey for him, he mounted it and rode after the man of God. He found him sitting under an oak tree and asked, are you the man of God who came from Judah? <clears throat> I am, he replied. So the prophet said to him, Come home with me and eat. The man of God said, I cannot turn back and go with you, nor can I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. I have been told by the word of the Lord, you must not eat bread or drink water there or return by the way you came. So remember those key facts because this is, we can definitely use, utilize this in past and present, but let's continue to read. Um, the old prophet answered, I too am a prophet as you are. <clears throat> and an angel said to me by the word of the Lord, bring him back with you to your house so that he may eat bread and drink water. But he was lying to him. So the man of God returned with him and ate and drank in his house. While they were sitting at the table, the word of the Lord came to the old prophet who had brought him back. He cried out to the man of God who had come from Judah. This is what the Lord says. You have defied the word of the Lord and have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. You came back and ate bread and drank water in the place where he told you not to eat or drink. Therefore, your body will not be buried in the tomb of your fathers. When the man of God had finished eating and drinking, the prophet who had brought him back had saddled his donkey for him. As he went on his way, a lion, a lion met him on the road and killed him. And his body was thrown down on the road with the boat with both the donkey and the lion standing beside it. Some people who passed by saw the body thrown down there with the lion standing beside the body, and they went and reported it in the city where the old prophet lived. When the prophet who had brought him back from his journey heard of it, he said, It is the man of God who defied the word of the Lord. The Lord has given him over to the lion, which has mauled him and killed him, as the word of the Lord had warned him. So this is difficult because <clears throat> um, be, there's understanding that this person, the person that went to Jeroboam was a prophet. And then this older, this more mature person went and lied to this uh, the, young, the other, other prophet, the younger prophet. And the younger prophet, instead of inquiring of the Lord, believed believed this person, went back with them, ate, and then the old prophet or the more mature prophet got a prophecy and told him, 
hey, you, you did not, the young prophet, you did not follow the Lord's command, which was true. And so the Lord, it may be a test. It also is a, a, a thing to us, for us, that some people could come. They may be believing too, but they could be working off of thoughts and feelings. They could be working off of things that they want to talk about and that they want to, um, there could be at times an agenda. When it's not the Lord's agenda, it's an incorrect agenda, period. And so um, that's why I pray. I pray every single time before a land Bible study because I don't want to be one to press an agenda. There's always thoughts and feelings and there's always things to think about and talk about. But at the end of everything, including any type of ideas or things that come to my mind, that's why I always say, pray about it. Go to the Lord. Think about it. Um, read. Read, you know, read scripture and bring give it to the Lord. And the Lord will provide you peace. And in this case, the, the, the prophet, um, he didn't go directly to the Lord. Even though he was told specific directions, he did not do that. And so a lion came and killed him. And the lion didn't kill a donkey. The lion just killed him and ended up standing by the donkey next to the carcass, which people saw. So that was something that was not normal. And people noticed and people reported it and took note and reported it. And so... Um, and also, the Lord can utilize anyone, including even though the this um, more mature prophet lied, he could have been utilized to test. He could have been, or he could have been um, in the wrong. But now he has been corrected, and the or, or is being utilized, even though he may have been wrong. Um, how this story plays out is one of those stories that is um, it it tells us a lot. It tells us a lot when it comes to um, the family of, of Christ. It tells us a lot from uh, w walking in the way. It tells us a lot as, as well as what happens when we don't go to the Lord. When we're told something specific and when you stray to the right or to the left, there's going to be consequences. And this is telling you, showing you, because and sometimes uh, some of the stories, uh, people were given direction and they don't stray to the right or to the left. But in this in this case, this is an example of someone that did not follow completely, and therefore he had a consequence. Um, but also this more mature prophet, this older prophet, is going to be utilized as well. Um, so uh, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. The prophet said to his son, saddle the donkey for me, and they did so. Then he went out and found the body thrown down on the road, with the donkey and the lion standing beside it. The lion had neither eaten the body nor mauled the donkey. So the prophet picked up the body of the man of God, laid it on the donkey, and brought it back to his own city to mourn for him and bury him. Then he laid the body in his own tomb, and they mourned over him and said, Oh, my brother. After burying him, and oh, that's another thing. It could have been, could have been jealousy. Think about that. It was a more mature prophet. Wasn't being utilized. Another prophet was being utilized. Could have been je jealousy. Think about that too. So not, and remember what I was mentioning earlier about the ageism thing. Sometimes more, you know, that's not necessarily the case when it comes to being more mature. More mature allows for a longer period of temptations and thoughts and feelings of our own instead of what the Lord wants us, uh, wills us to do. So there's a lot to think about, right? Let's continue, uh, what, uh, just, what, uh, let's continue to read. After burying him, oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, after burying him, he said to his sons, when I die, bury me in the grave where the man of God is buried. Lay my bones besides his, his bones for the message he declared by the a word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel and against all the shrines on the high places in the towns of Samaria will certainly come true. Even after this, Jeroboam did not change his evil ways, but once more appointed priests for the high places from all sorts of people. Anyone who wanted to become a priest, he consecrated for the high places. This was the sin of the house of Jeroboam that led to its downfall and to its destruction from the face of the earth. <laughs> so 
tells you right there. Um, again, um, so the more mature prophet, the older prophet was saying, yep, what the younger prophet had prophesied will come true. And so um, he wanted to honor, you know, the, uh, the, young, the younger prophet. So he kind of, it was almost kind of like a um, repaying for his wrong, you know, that he did. And so, um, and he wanted to do that and he felt like he needed to do it. And so that's what he did. He mourned for the prophet and he also buried him in his um, um, burial grounds. So um, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Ahijah's prophecy against Jeroboam. At that time, Ahijah, son of Jeroboam, became ill and Jeroboam said to his wife, Go disguise yourself so you won't be recognized as the wife of Jeroboam. Then go to Shiloh. Ajai, the prophet, is there. The one who told me I would be king over this people. Take ten loaves of bread with you, some cakes and a jar of honey, and go to him. He will tell you what will happen to the boy. So Jeroboam's wife did what he said and went to Ajai's house in Shiloh. Hijah's house in Shiloh. Now, Ajai could not see. His sight was gone because of his age. But the Lord had told Ahijah, Jeroboam's wife is coming to ask you about her son, for he is ill, and you are to give her such an answer. You are to give her such and and such an answer. When she arrives, she will um, pretend to be someone else. So when Ahijah heard the sound of her footsteps at the door, he said, "Come in, wife of Jeroboam." <laughs> I know that <laughs> she was probably shocked. Why this pretense? I have been sent to you with bad news. Go tell Jeroboam that this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I raised you up from among the people, made you a leader over my people Israel. I tore the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you. But you have not been like my servant David, who kept my commands and followed me with all his heart, doing only what was right in my eyes. You have done more evil than all who lived before you. You have made for yourselves for yourself, other gods, idols made of metal, you have provoked me to anger and thrust me behind your back. A quick pause. <clears throat> so from now on, the kings of Israel, Judah, and Judah will be compared to previous kings. And in this case, it's um, going in uh, both right now, both kingdoms are being compared to Judah, but that's going to it's going to be like that, but it's uh, compared to David, but we'll see what's going to happen to those king, to the two kingdoms, especially Israel compared to Judah. Um, let's continue to read. Because of this, I am going to bring disaster on the house of Jeroboam. I will cut off from Jeroboam every last male in Israel, slave or free. I will burn up the house of Jeroboam as one burns dung, Oof, until it is all gone. Dogs will eat those belonging to Jeroboam who die in the city, and the birds of the air will feed on those who die in the country. The Lord has spoken. Mm. Consequences. As for you, go back home. When you set foot in your, your city, the boy will die. All Israel will mourn for him and bury him. He is the only one belonging to Jeroboam who will be buried, because he is the only one in the house of Jeroboam in whom the Lord, the God of Israel, has found anything good. Hmm. says a lot says where Jeroboam has led the king has led Israel down the hill into sin the Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel who will cut off the family of Jeroboam this is the day what yes even now and the Lord will strike Israel so that it will be like a reed swaying in the water he will uproot Israel from this good land that he gave to their forefathers and scatter them beyond the river because they provoked the Lord to anger by making Asherah poles. He will, uh, and he will give Israel up because of the sins Jeroboam has committed and he has caused Israel to commit. Then, then Jeroboam's wife got up and left and went to uh, Tirzah. As soon as she stepped over the threshold of the house, the boy died. They buried him and all to Israel mourned for him as the Lord had said, through his servant, the prophet Ahijah. The other events of Jeroboam's reign, his wars, and how he ruled are written in the book of the annuals of the kings of Israel. He reigned for 22 years and then raised, uh, rested with his fathers, and Nadab, his son, succeeded him 
as king. So it's, it's also going to go back and forth between Israel and Judah now. And so Israel, king of Israel is not doing too well. And because of poor leadership, think about that in our lives, past to present uh, work. When, you, when we have poor leadership, do you see the team succeeding? Are you that poor leadership? Is someone else that poor leadership? Think about those things and also give it to the Lord. Ask the Lord for guidance and help and wisdom, right? Because you never know. The Lord can make it work. They can, that person can end up moving on or things can change. Change of heart, change of task, change of mind, right? Think about that. It works in family too. Works in um, churches and in um, synagogues and anywhere um, um, where leadership, where there's leaderships and in communities and towns and cities and such. Think about that. And always, uh, it's always a good thing to pray for each other. Pray for each other that we all have uh, guidance um, and uh, guidance through the Lord and that we all um, will um, continue the wa our walk. And through those walks, you're blessed, right? So think about those things in a past and present in our lives. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Rehoboam, king of Judah. Rehoboam, son of Solomon, was king in Judah. Uh, he was 41 years old when he became king and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem. The city uh, the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel of Israel in which to put his name. His, his mother's name was Nama. She was an, an Ammonite. Judah did evil in the eyes of the Lord. By the sins they committed, they stirred up his jealous anger more than their fathers had done. They also set up for themselves high places, sacred stones and Asherah poles on every high hill and under, un, under every spreading tree. There were even male shrine prostitutes in the land. The people engaged in all the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. <clears throat> Quick pause. Remember way back when Moses, he kept telling them, warned them. Then another uh, leader came, um, Joshua, warned them again. And keep telling them, they keep, you know, you're going to get in the promised land and you're going to be just like the people who were here. Everything's going to be going good and it's going to go to, and you're going to be like, we don't need, we don't need the Lord because everything's going good or they're going to forget. And that's what's happening. Let's continue to read. Um, in the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, attacked Jerusalem. He carried off the treasures of the temple of the Lord and the treasures of of the royal palace. He took everything, including all the gold shields Solomon had made. So King Rehoboam made bronze shields to replace them and assign these to the commanders of the guard on duty at the entrance to the royal palace. Whenever the king went to the Lord's temple, the guards bore the shields and afterward they returned them uh, to the, the guard room. As for the other events of Rehoboam's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annuals of the kings of Judah? There was continual warfare between Rehoboam and Jeroboam, Jeroboam, and Rehoboam rested with his fathers and was buried with them in the city of David. His mother's name was Nama. She was an Ammonite, and Abijah, his son, succeeded him as king. So, the blessing of peace around, gone, because they were worshiping other idols and they were starting to do detestable things and having other people in um, that were not Le uh, Levites in the temple. And they were also setting up other high places other to other gods and such. So they were not following the commands and the Lord was angry. And so here comes the consequence, right? Um, and, and so reading over this portion, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Abijah, king of Judah. In the 18th year of the reign of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, Abijah became king of Judah, and he reigned in Jerusalem three years. His mother's name was Makkah, daughter of Abishalom. 
He committed all the sins his father had done before him. His heart was not fully devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of David his forefather had been. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord had, his, his God gave him a lamb in Jerusalem by raising up a son to succeed him and by making Jerusalem strong. For David had done what was right in the eyes of the Lord and had not failed to keep any of the Lord's commands all the days of his life, except in the case of Uri the Hittite. <laughs> I know. I love that part. It's like dot, dot, except dot, dot, dot in case of the murder. <laughs> Whoops. But it was because David, again, like his son Solomon, was going after his lust. He was going after something that he, and at the, and at the same time, um, the Lord can still, even though those actions happened and there was consequences, the Lord can still utilize. Because remember, um, Bathsheba, Bore Solomon. So, says a lot. Says a lot. And, and, and if it comes to understanding, when it comes to understanding about these things, um, pray about it. Um, because wisdom comes from the Lord. And we may not understand all the Lord's actions and what he does because we're, we're, we're not holy. We're not God, you know, but it's okay to ask and, and, and have a discussion with them and really seek the Lord and it's really humble and, and thank him and praise him for everything. So, uh, with that, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Uh, he can, okay. There was more. Okay. Uh, we, I think I lost my place again. <laughs> so, there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam throughout Abishai's life. Okay. And Abishai's lifetime. I think I read all this, but that's okay. As for the other events of Abishai's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the angels, the kings of Judah? There was war between Abishai and Jeroboam and Abishai rested with his fathers. And, okay. Yes, I did. Awesome. So Asa is now going to rule. Asa, king of Judah. In the 20th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Asa became king of Judah, and he reigned in Jerusalem 41 years. His grandmother's name was Makkah, daughter of Absalom. Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, as his father David had done. So take note. He expelled the male shrine prostitutes from the land and got rid of the, all the idols his father's had made. He even disposed his grandmother, Makkah, from her position as queen mother because she had made a repulsive Asherah pole. Asa cut the, uh, the pole down and bear, uh, burned it in the Kidron Valley, although he did not remove the high places. Asa's heart was fully committed to the Lord all his life. He brought into the temple of the Lord the silver and gold and the articles that he that he and his father had dedicated. There was war between Asa and Basha, king of Israel, throughout their reigns. Basha, king of Israel, went up against Judah and fortified Ramah to prevent anyone from leaving or entering the territory of Asa, king of Judah. Asa then took all the silver and gold that was left in the treasuries of the Lord's temple and of his own palace. He entrusted it to his officials and sent them to Ben-Hadid, son of Tabramon, the son of Hezion, the king of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus. Let there be a treaty between me and you, he said, as there was between my father and your father. See, I am sending you a gift of silver and gold. Now break your treaty with Basha, king of Israel, so he will withdraw from me. So at this time, Basha had also made a king, uh, had a, made a pact with king of Aram. And so now um, Asa even though he was following in the footsteps and the commands of the Lord, didn't go to the Lord on this. And so there's going to be consequence, and we'll learn about that here in just a moment. <clears throat> he took all the silver and gold and wanted to make a treaty. Um, and that is another thing. So things can look good when we make the decision on a short term, but in the long term, there could be huge consequences. A little pebble could trickle into a waterfall, you know, so you never know. And that's why it's always good to bring the Lord into everything because you don't want to have to deal with those consequences because of our own decisions. And we also, when the, when we do make a mistake, we also have to own up to it and understand that there may be consequences and accept those. Remember, uh, Shemai was uh, mocking David and, 
and cursing at him and such. And David un understood and accepted that there may be consequences to his actions. So what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind about this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Ben Hadad agreed, agreed to or uh, agreed with King Asa and sent the commanders of his forces against the towns of Israel. He conquered um, Ijon, Dan, Ebel, Beth, Makkah, and all Kinnereth, in addition to Naphtali. When Basha heard this, he stopped building Ramah and withdrew to Tirzah. Then King Asa issued an order to all Judah. No one was exempt, and they carried away from Ramah the stones and timber Basha had been using there. With them, King Asa built up Geba, Geba and Benjamin and also Mizpah. As for the other events of Asa's reign, all his achievements, all he did, and the cities he built, are they not written in the book of the annuals of the kings of Judah? In his old age, however, he, his feet became diseased. Then also rested with his fathers and was buried with them in the city of his father, David, and Jehoshaphat, his son, succeeded him as king. So, Asa didn't, uh, he ended up having disease in his feet that more than likely was part of consequence and, um, and but still was buried with his father in, in Jerusalem. So in the city of David, um, but his life was compared to David. So that means that he was among the Kings that were trying to hold to the Lord's commands and, uh, and follow the Lord as close uh, uh, and walk with the Lord. And so now we're going to switch again, <laughs> but before we do, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Nadab, king of Israel. Nadab, son of Jeroboam, became king of Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah, and he reigned over Israel two years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, walking in the ways of his father and in his, and in his sin, which he had caused Israel to commit. Baasha, son of Aijah, of the house of Ishakar, plotted against him, and he struck him down at Gib Gibbethon, a Philistine town, while Nadab and all Israel were besieging it. Baasha killed Nadab in the third year of Asa king of Judah and succeeded him as king. As soon as he began to reign, he killed Jeroboam's whole family. He did not leave Jeroboam any one that breathed, but destroyed them all, according to the word of the Lord given through his servant Hijai the Shilonite. Because of the sins Jeroboam had committed and had caused Israel to commit, and because he provoked the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger. Remember, remember that. As the other, as for the other events of Nadab's reign and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the annuals of the kings of Israel? There was war between Asa and Basha, king of Israel, throughout their reigns. So again, remember, um, the prophet came and said, Jeroboam, this is what's going to happen. You're not going to have anybody continue to reign in Israel. Your whole family is going to get killed off. Boom, prophecy has been fulfilled, <laughs> as we just read. <laughs> Basha, son of Aijah, how, Ishakar plotted against him, and, uh, and, while Nadab, and, and Basha killed Nadab, the end, and killed all of Jeroboam's family, so there would be nobody left to um, rule Israel. Nobody in lineage and nobody left to rule. So... The Lord has torn the kingdom from Jeroboam's family because he continued to sin. He didn't, he didn't do what he was uh, what he was going to do, um, what he was informed to do, and he just wanted to do Jeroboam just wanted to do what he wanted to do. And so, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? And um, just this last part: Basha, king of Israel, in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, Basha, son of Ijai, became king. Of all Israel and Tirzah, and he reigned 24 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, walking the ways of Jeroboam and in his sin, which he had caused Israel to commit. And so we'll learn more about what um, Asa uh, is going to, be, or Basha, 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 I'm sorry, Basha um, is going to be and do on the next time. As you can see, <clears throat> even though he killed Jeroboam's family and such, he's not necessarily a good person either. 
And so let's do, uh, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind as we um, near the end of our Bible study today? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's do a quick review. So where we started was <clears throat> uh, about Solomon and his wives and how he had many, many, many wives and many children by, uh, by these wives and concubines and such. To the, and also to the point where these women were <clears throat> leading him astray. And so he was building other temples and trying to please all of his, all of his wives, maybe because of whatever reason, including lust, you know. And so there were consequences. Jeroboam rebels against Solomon. So Solomon started having issues with rebels and, and having wars because there was no more peace. There was consequences to his actions. Since he wasn't following all of what the Lord had uh, uh, wanted him to do, the Lord was allowing for things to happen. Not good things, right? Solomon's death. And Solomon uh, passed away. But before he did, he was given a prophecy by a prophet telling him that the Lord is taking the kingdom away from Solomon and, his, and the family. And that uh, only one tribe will be left to for, uh, for the David's family to rule over as to not nullify the promise that he made to David, um, but the rest of them will be torn away. And so we see that. We see that with um, when Israel rebels against Rehoboam and how Jeroboam took over, um, was able to um, go with a question to Rehoboam, uh, Solomon's son, and that was about the yoke, the yoke of, uh, of those tributes. And uh, he wanted, he, he, Jeroboam understood and knew that the, the people of Israel wanted less. They wanted less of a burden. And so he got in good with the people, right? <clears throat> and instead of Rehoboam uh, listening to the elders and listening to those that knew how the people felt, he listened to his friends and who he wanted to listen to, who gave him bad information. And so that's when the kingdom was split. Uh, and so Rehoboam only had one tribe left. The rest of the tribes went and followed Jeroboam. And Jeroboam was told he was going to, um, was also provided in prophecy that he was going to um, lead and rule Israel as long as he followed the commandments of the Lord. Instead, what did Jeroboam do? He goes make two, once he gets the kingship, um, he goes make two golden calves. So he's told <clears throat> by a prophet, you know, what's going to happen to him. And it came to pass, the man of God from Judah. And within that, because <clears throat> uh, he was told, you know, his family would not lead Israel any, anymore. He was, um, the kingship would be torn away from him. And that's what happens. And so, um, but in that, there's a story about also about between two prophets um, and how that not seeking the Lord and not allowing the Lord to be there, whether it's conversation or seeking the Lord after information has been provided and getting that peace and getting that reaffirmance without doing that can, can still lead you astray. And people can do it out of spite. You know, as someone that may be a follower can still sin. We, we, we unfortunately all sin. And, um, oh, and though we do, we can still humble, humble ourselves and ask for forgiveness. And so we have to think about that because there's only one perfect person that was Jesus. <laughs> and we'll get to that very soon, right? Um, but, uh, over everything that we've read today, Abijah's prophecy against Jeroboam and how that came true, Rehoboam, king of Judah, Abijah, king of Judah, we start getting into all these kings because it starts going, uh, the timeline starts going a little bit faster and picking up and it's comparing the two kingdoms, Israel and Judah, Israel and Judah, and who, who was being compared to um, what, what type of king? Were they being compared to David as a good king or were they being compared to Jeroboam as a bad king? As the king of Judah um, and Basha king, or Nadab, king of Israel, and Basha, king of Israel. So it looks like that a lot of the kings of Israel following after Jeroboam's footsteps and not 
leading Israel correctly. So reading over all of the information that we had today, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Thank you very much for joining me once again on another Lamp Bible Study. Um, I hope and pray that we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom together and through His Holy Word. And I hope today there was a lot of information. Go, I always encourage you to go back and read it, pray about it. If you have any comments, please leave the comments in the comment section. There's also an Instagram page as well as a contact email and the YouTube page. If you want to become part or do more with a Lamp Bible Study, you can always send an email or I'll leave a comment. Um, I'll be sure to provide feedback. So um, uh, with that, there's always uh, the highlights throughout the week um, because these land Bible studies are posted every Tuesday and Thursdays. And there's also a flashlight every Friday uh, with the Bible verse. So uh, continue, continue in our, our Bible study, continue in prayer, continue in our walk with the Lord. And continue to pray for me as, as always, I will always continue to pray for you. And so with all of that said, I hope and pray that you have a blessed morning, a blessed day, a blessed afternoon, a blessed evening, a blessed night. God bless.